I want you to turn to a few scriptures. Lord, how do you want me to do that? Do you want me to do it as I go or just do it at the beginning? Yeah, let me go to the last one. Yeah. <laughs> Ephesians 3. Then we're going to dip back into Ephesians 2 and 1, chapter 2 and chapter number 1. So we'll be right around that book of Ephesians. But I want to read, I want to read verse number 3 first. And I'm going to read verses number 8 through 11. In Ephesians 3, 8 through 11. We had the privilege of being able to fellowship with the doctor last night. And as she began to talk, I almost felt like writing her a check. a royalty check for some of the things that she didn't know that I'm right now just started writing a book. My publisher actually asked me to write the book on this subject because I made mention of it, just a mention of it, and then when he, he just called me and said, you gotta, you've got to write a book on it. And, and this is what the book is about, so it's already stirring in my spirit. And as she began to talk last night, there were so many nuggets and so many streams and so many connections, so many links to the chain that she began to add to it. And I really felt like the Spirit of the Lord told me, instead of a new thing this morning to minister to you a more sure thing and and to dive in a vein where you have been called apostolically as a people to lead the body of Christ into now I'm going to say this again and I'm sorry to put that kind of weight on you <laughs> but the spirit of God did it that you have been called as an apostolic people to lead the body of Christ into a revelation and a dimension that we are supposed to be dwelling in. So what I'm teaching to you this morning is your DNA. And to get you so engrossed in it that it is like breathing to you. That you function in it knowing that this is not just a revelation, but this is a call of God for you as a people collectively. So look at somebody and say, we got to step into this. We got to. We don't have a choice. We don't have a choice. She is leading the body of Christ into some things, and you are the people, the disciples, the, the apostolic company that has been handpicked by God to walk in these revelations and the demonstrations of them so that we can step into them. And verse number 8 says, this is Paul talking about the mystery. Now, he reveals it on up in verse number 3. I mean, in, in chapter number three, in the first seven verses, when he talks about how he was indeed given after he heard the dispensation of grace, he's praying for the Ephesians church because once he steps into Ephesus, let me just set this up for just a moment. Once he steps into Ephesus, because I think this is the prophetic picture of this whole year and season for you and the body of Christ that this is the, the year of the door. Prophetically, the emphasis is on the door because it's on the door because of the Hebrew calendar 5784 and reflected four of a door and how 
how this is a season where your mouth is going to open up things for you. No, you're not going to have to twist it with your hand to get the door open. You're not going to have to do anything. You're going to open up your mouth and things are going to open over your life and in cities and states and regions and nations and families. And it's Paul, it is Paul that gave us this revelation in 1 Corinthians when he said, A wide door of effectual service has been opened unto me, but there are many adversaries. Well, that door that he was talking about was Ephesus. He says, I get the sense that it's time for me to step into Ephesus and that my anointing is about to break open something in Ephesus. And so it is to that scripture that Paul was referring to when he says, or what we're referring to, when a door is open of effectual service and he was able to break into Ephesus Open up to Ephesus, the realm of the kingdom of heaven. Step in it and make it the most influential church in the first century. He went in and drove a principality out. And you and I are reading scripture out of the door that he kicked down. I want you to think about that for a moment. That had not he broke through that door into Ephesus, we wouldn't have the book of Ephesians. Which means behind that door was a revelation. Behind that door was an expansion of the kingdom of heaven that you and I are still gleaning from today. This is what I want this year. I don't want to just open up some for me. I want to hit cities and states and nations so hard that after I'm gone, that people are still walking through the door that I kicked open with revelation knowledge. We're not talking about opening up doors for your bills to be paid, y'all. No, no, no. I'm not minimizing that, but I'm talking about mega doors. I'm talking about wide doors of effectual service where your anointing kicks something down that generations walk through. That cities walk through. And Paul, because he was able to get in that door, we have this revelation handed to us. And his whole book to the Ephesus church was don't you settle. That's what the whole book is about. That now that you have come into the kingdom, into a knowledge of who Jesus is, don't be satisfied to stop with the new birth. He takes them on in to the length, the width, the depth, the height. Those are dimensions right there. <laughs> he, he says there are dimensions to this that I want you in. That's God's cry to the church. Don't stop at being saved. Salvation is not the consummation. Salvation is the initiation. Oh, Salvation gets you through the door. Now you got to find out what's in the room. And it is this that Paul is telling the Ephesians church. So he drops things in the Ephesians church that are so deep, that are so profound, that we are still trying to figure out exactly the length, the width, the depth, the height of what Paul was trying to get us to realize. One of the things he said here was that I was called, this is Paul saying, I was called to reveal to the saints the mystery. The mystery, the mystery, the mystery, the mystery. 